In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create the toolpaths for the rocket nameplate you see on the screen. The vectors used in this example were created in a previous vector drawing tutorial, which is available through the related video section to this tutorial. So for now, I'm going to close out of this, so file close. So we're going to start now by opening an existing file. So in this case, it's the rocket nameplate vector drawing.crv. And now we'll see a number of vectors on our screen. So we've got an outer and inner border. We've got the four drill holes and we've got the curved rocket text in the center. Now, the first thing we're going to do here is group some of these vectors together so that we don't need multiple selections when we come to thinking about machining. I know that I need to pocket out between the rocket text and the inner border. So if we select the text and then hold in shift, also select the inner border, right click on the mouse and we'll come down to group objects. We select that, that's now been grouped together as one. So you'll see now if I deselect and go back in, I can select both of these vectors together by clicking on either one. And now that's done, I also need to do the same with the four drill holes. So again, holding down shift, we'll just select all of those. And instead of using the right mouse button this time, I'll demonstrate another method, which is to just press G on the keyboard with the items that you'd like to group selected. So again, now that's done, you can click on either one of the four drill holes and they'll all select as a group. So now we've grouped those objects together, we can move away from the drawing menu and over to the toolpaths menu. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is set up our material. And these are set already, so we'll see that our material thickness is half an inch. Our XY datum position is in the lower left hand corner. We'll be zeroing from the material surface and we just need to check over the rapid and home start positions to make sure they're safe and appropriate for your machine. So with that done, we can click OK to accept. And we can now go ahead and start creating our first toolpath. And this will be the pocket between the text and the inner border. So as we've already grouped them, I can select both vectors by just clicking on the inner border. And then I can come across to the pocket toolpath. And I can take a look at the settings that we've got here. So the start depth will be from the top of the material again at zero. Our cut depth in this case is going to be an eighth of an inch, so 0.125. The tool that we're going to be using will be the eighth inch end mill. And we'll just check over our cutting parameters and feeds and speeds and then select that tool. We don't need a clearance pass in this case, so we can remove the second tool that already populated the list. And we can move down to look at which strategy we're looking to use. So we can either raster X and Y or use an offset strategy. And given the curved shape of this rocket nameplate, I think in this case, the offset strategy is going to be our best bet. We don't want to be thinking about ramps, so we'll deselect that. And we can just go down and call this pocket text and we'll click calculate. So we can see that represented on our material in the 3D view by these 2D lines. And we can go ahead and simulate that now by pressing preview visible toolpaths or the play button. And just so that we can see the results clearer here, I'm just going to give the toolpath color. So choose toolpath color and from the drop down, just going to go for a dark red. So that looks great. And that then gives us a much clearer view of the area that's been cleared by the pocket tool. And with that done, the next step is to look at adding some texture into the pocket. So the area between the text and the inner border. So to start that, I'm just going to close out the preview and we're going to go to a horizontally tiled view. So we can see the 2D view and the 3D view together. And with those same vectors selected, I'm now going to come across and I'm going to be using the texture in toolpath strategy under toolpath operations. And once the form opens, the first thing that we're going to be thinking about is what tool we're going to be using here. So we'll open the tool database and because we're looking for quite a smooth scalloped effect, we're not going to be wanted, wanting to use the flat tools. So we'll be looking to use a ball nose. And in this case, we're going to go for an eighth inch ball nose tool. Again, just checking over the cutting parameters and feeds and speeds. And then we can select that. And our start depth here isn't actually going to be from the material surface. Because we're cutting this into an area that's already been cleared by a pocket toolpath, we're going to want to start that from the depth of the pocket, which in this case was one eighth of an inch, so 0.125. So that will ensure that the cutting starts at the bottom of this pocket. 
Now the next thing is selecting our parameters for our texture. And these are covered in depth in the Vector Textures 2.5D Toolpaths video, which you can find in the related video section on this page. But for the purposes of this project, I already know the exact parameters I want to set here, so I'll just enter 0 0.03 for the maximum cutting depth. Minimum depth we want to set a little bit deeper, so we'll move that slider and we'll place it somewhere around the middle. That'll be fine. Our maximum cut length will be half an inch. And again, we'll leave the minimum length slider around the middle. Maximum overlap, we'll have that set at 20%. Variation slider set about halfway. Step over at 0 0.05. And again, variation around the middle. We don't need to offset for the boundary. And so we can just come down and we'll call this texture pocket. And then we can go ahead and calculate. So we can see that displayed now in the 3D view. So if I just go and maximize that and we'll just play that through. And after doing that, we can see now that this isn't quite as we expected. So we were hoping to just go up to the border of the text and the inside of the inner border and not interfere with the text in any way. So that just shows how important it is to really take a good look at your 3D view to make sure that the toolpaths are coming out as expected. So what we can do, we can undo that now and we'll need to think about how to address this problem. And to do that, I'm going to go back into the toolpath and all of our settings are going to remain the same. So there's nothing that we need to do with these. But the one thing that I didn't think I needed in the first place, which was a boundary offset, could really help us out here. So. At the moment, the tool is cutting onto the border of this texture toolpath. So what I need to do is apply an allowance to stop the tool before it gets to the text and before it gets to the inside of the border. Now, given that the tool's diameter is 0.125, making the radius 0 0.0625, I need to give this an offset of just a little greater than the radius. So here I'm going to give that 70 thou, and I'm just going to recalculate that. And now we can re-preview that following the change. I'm just going to change the toolpath color of that texture toolpath to dark red as well. And we can see now that that's given us exactly what we're looking for. So we've got this textured area in the pocket, but it's not violating the text or the inside of the border. Okay, so the next stage is to look at the drill holes which are going to be used to fix or hang this nameplate. So I'm just going to go back into the horizontal view and I'm going to select the four drill holes or the vectors that represent the drill holes by just selecting one. If you remember, we've already grouped those, so it will select all four. I'm going to close out of the preview and this time under toolpath operations, I'm going to choose the drilling toolpath. Now, this time we're not cutting into the area of an existing toolpath, so we can just set the start depth from the material surface at zero. Our cutting depth will be the full thickness of the material. And if I don't know that, then I can just type Z equals on the keyboard and that will give me my material thickness of half an inch. And as the diameter of these holes is an eighth of an inch, I'm going to choose my eighth inch end mill and select that from the tool database. And as we're using relatively thin material and the tools on the larger side, we won't need to be looking to use pet drilling. So now I can just come down and we'll name this drill holes and we can calculate that. Now just bear in mind that the drilling toolpath only controls the Z or Z coordinates. So any inconsistencies with the shape of the holes will be down to the tool dimensions. So if they're different to those specified in the tool database or if the tool's misshapen in any way, then just remember it can lead to inconsistencies here. So we can see the toolpath displayed in both the 3D and the 2D view here. And we can go ahead and preview that. And you'll see that the four drill holes that we need for hanging have now been added in. Okay, so the final toolpath we're going to be looking at here is the cutout pass that we're going to be putting around the outside. So I'm just going to close out of the preview now. And we're going to come over to the 2D view and select the outer border on its own. And this time under toolpath operations, we're going to be choosing the profile toolpath. The start depth again is going to be from the material surface and our cut depth is going to be the full thickness of the material. So half an inch. Our tool this time, we're going to be using the eighth inch end mill. 
And with the pass depth of the tool currently set at an eighth of an inch, that will give us four passes. We can choose whether we want to machine outside, inside, or on the vectors. And of course, in this case, we're going to want to machine outside of them to protect the shape of the profile. And now because we're cutting through the full thickness of the material, we need to make sure that the part doesn't break away loose from the rest of the material. And to do this, we can choose to add tabs to the toolpath, which will leave small areas of material in specified places around the profile to hold the part to the rest of the material. So we've got the default settings for the dimensions of the tabs here, but we're just going to change this to 0.25 for the length and 0.1 inches for the thickness of the tabs. And we can use this edit tabs button to specify the placement of them. So first of all, in this form, you can choose the number of tabs you're going to add on to the part. So in this case, I'm going to add four and I'll just click that button to add them in and that will automatically place the tabs. But if you then bring your cursor over into the 2D view, we can see that the cursor changes to indicate the tab placement. So we can hover the cursor over one of the existing tabs and holding down the left mouse button, we can drag that around the profile to change its placement. Now, when you add the tabs from the form, it will automatically avoid corners and overly curved areas because these can be problematic placements. So you need to do the same when you're manually adding the tab placements in. So instead of adding them onto sharp corners, such as down here, it's best to add them onto longer spans so that it's simpler for the tool to cut and it will also make your life a lot easier when you come to finishing this and removing the tabs at a later point. And the automatic placement here is looking pretty good, but I'm just going to alter these slightly, just move these two in line, move this one down so it's central to that edge. And as well as moving the tabs around, you can also delete by hovering the cursor over an existing tab. And as soon as that X symbol appears to indicate that there's a tab to remove, a left mouse click will delete that tab. And then you can add one back in if you need to with a further left mouse click. So I'll just move that one over slightly. And I'm happy with that placement now. So we can close out of the tab form. With that done, we can now come down and we'll name this cutout. And we can go ahead and calculate that. So now that we've added that profile toolpath in with tabs, we can zoom in on the 3D view. And we can see this area where the tool's lifted to leave a small amount of material behind for the tab. So we've got four passes in total. And on the fourth and final pass, we've got the tab that's left in, just as a hold down method that we can then break away and clean up later when we're finishing the part. Okay, so we'll just expand the 3D view, so it's in full view, and we can go ahead and play that. And we can see now that we've created that profile cutout, uh, but we've got these four individual tabs on each edge just to hold the part to the material for the duration and the machining process. Okay, so now that we've created our four toolpaths for this project, at this point, we can now go ahead and save our toolpaths to output to the CNC machine. To learn how to do this, please refer to the dedicated toolpath saving guide tutorial that you can find in the related video section for this tutorial. So I'm not going to be saving the toolpaths at this time, but what I'm going to do now just to finish this off is just save this away. So we're going to go up to file, save as, and we're going to save this as the rocket nameplate 2.5dtoolpaths.crv. And that's all saved away now so that we can come back in and post those toolpaths out at a later point.